Welcome to Point Blank. Tonight we are on the topic of the global financial crisis and how companies are fighting back. That's right. And in our living room, we have the people in the business of managing, well, people, human resource and manpower as well as PR. We have David Ang, who is the executive director of the Singapore Human Resources Institute. We have Edwin Yeo, who is the general manager for Strategic Public Relations Group. And we also have Danny Go, the human resource manager for Gain City, a local SME. But before we begin our discussion, let's take a look at what businesses have been experiencing since the collapse of the Lehman Brothers in September. Let's take a look. The Chinese characters for crisis consist of Wei, meaning danger, and Ji, meaning opportunity. In no other time in recent history has the message been truer than today that there is opportunity to be had in every crisis. The downturn has presented the region's largest telco, Singtel, with the opportunity to venture into markets like China and Vietnam, where some companies are now more open to selling a stick in themselves and at lower prices as well. And this is possible even as Singtel puts in place a series of cost-cutting measures, including a hiring freeze and a cutback on discretionary expenses. But Singtel maintains that it will consider retrenchment only as a last resort. And supermarket chain NTUC FairPrice is also pushing ahead with its planned expansion and adding more staff on its payroll. Its no layoff assurance comes in the wake of DBS Bank's largest retrenchment of 900 of its employees and the widespread fear that other companies may follow suit. Rather than exiting its employees, NTUC FairPrice believes that the lull period offered by the business slowdown is best for developing their employees and forging greater loyalty. But businesses across the world have cut hundreds and thousands of jobs as they prepare for what they fear could be a prolonged and deep recession. While many of these jobs may be shared outside of Singapore, employees here fear becoming victims of retrenchment decisions made at company headquarters based either in the US or elsewhere. Unlike labor laws in most Western nations that render retrenchment a quick fix for most companies due to greater difficulty in reducing salaries without attracting lawsuits from disgruntled employees, employment laws in East Asia tend to favor employers, allowing them to be more creative and not forgetting that there is also more government and public support in implementing measures to help save jobs. But with the current global crisis, some have raised questions about the Anglo-Saxon way of doing business and have started to predict a shift toward a more compassionate and paternalistic work culture. In other words, companies may still kill, but they do so more gently. Yesterday, the Ministry of Manpower and its tripartite partners released a set of guidelines to help firms manage excess manpower with the hope of ensuring that they may be able to reposition their workforce and seize opportunities once the economy starts to recover. The guidelines underscored how and why the principle and spirit of leadership by example, close consultations and transparency should prevail in especially hard times like this. And if some measures like shorter work weeks may be less applicable to executives and senior management, the top-level management staff will have to make sacrifices such as wage adjustments in order to ride out the storm. A case in point is Singapore's chartered semiconductor, which has also implemented temporary salary reductions of 5 to 20% after posting a loss, with senior management taking the biggest hit. So what else can companies do to combat the current crisis to stay sustainable and successful? Okay, so we have uh, we have guidelines now on uh, on on you know whether how to act and how to how to not act. Okay? That's right. So when we begin with you, David. You know, what, what, were, what were your initial reactions when you first heard that the guidelines had been published? I think it is not just company fighting back. I think the whole country is trying to fight back in terms of elevating you know, the, our, rest, our citizens, in terms of having a job, continue to have a good living and maintaining our living. Now when these guidelines uh, came out, I think it is only very, uh, in, in the nick of time if I may say so, especially learning from you know, the experience of some company who are retrenching their staff and who are doing it the wrong way. So I think it is important for us to ensure you know, that whatever we do, we have the people at heart. And we talk of you know, a mission for company, 
rather than to be a mis- mercenary in terms of you know the way we do the business. So you're talking about work culture here and how it should be more um, employee welfare should be above you know not above at least on par or in the purview of, of management. But you know are you were you you know surprised at all that the guidelines were published you know uh, you said in the nick of time as compared to previous financial crises you know were you surprised that it was out so quickly? Well, I think we learned from the Asian financial crisis and during the difficult times when SAR uh, hit Singapore. At that time, also, we have you know, tripartite committee looking into various ways of helping business stay afloat, how to retrench uh, people um, with, with a heart, and at the same time, how can we you know, come up with a set of guidelines in order to help companies right over this rough time. And I think we hit upon a very strong uh, focus, and that is to say that if you can keep your people, if you can retain the key people that you need for the organization and business, when the economy turns round, I think you will be able to catch the wind. Uh, and that is why I think we came up with this um, upgrading program to build resi- uh, resiliency, uh, to build up the confidence of uh, Singaporeans who are affected by the retrenchment. And at the same time, I think it is to prepare our workforce with a mindset you know, that there is opportunity in danger time. Just as you have um, illustrated, you know. With yeah, the, but would you say that the guidelines have already been in, ex- in existence since 2001? I mean, like, you know, what's, what's new this time around? Okay. Some of, many of these, several of these guidelines have been, have been, have been around for, for, for since 2001. And, you know, how exactly when, how would you define the breaking point? When do, do companies really have to act, start acting their, their, their workers? You know? I think the majority of the workforce about 60-70% are employed by the SME. You know, and SME are very much affected in this uh, meltdown in terms of you know, credit crunch, in terms of uh, how to you know, reduce orders and so on and so forth. So we do not want uh, the SME who may not have a good HR practices in place. Mm-hmm. You know, that this guideline can help them uh, at least work out a, a very nice arrangement in case they have to, you know, uh, redeploy or they have to let go of the staff. Um, so I, I think it is important for us to realize that although HR professional, in their own way, have already thought of the various measures, mm-hmm. and businesses and employer will know, you know, where are the hot hot spots in terms of um, uh, surviving the business and so on. Such as, for example, you know, you will go on cost cutting measures. You will go yeah. into how do we save lighting. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, that leads us to actually the point mm. where you know we are talking about on the ground policy, HR policy, and all that, which is where Danny comes in actually. You know, Danny, you are a HR manager in Gain City, and Gain yes, City yes. is a local SME with about 500 over employees, right? Right. Uh, mm. So, what are, what's your, you know, as a HR manager, the person who implements these policies, what do such guidelines mean to you? What was Gain City, uh, what's Gain City sort of reaction? To these guidelines? Well, uh, first of all, I, I tend to agree with uh, gentlemen there. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we are actually looking at uh, you know, training our staff and training, upgrading our people yeah, and putting them in, into better use. Yeah. And uh, at this point of time, uh, retrenchment is, is not in, in uh, not in Gain City's yeah, books. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, not in our books. And then we, I suppose, uh, we should uh, allow the employee to, to carry on the, their, their normal routine and their work instead of disrupting their, their work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. What other measures have, you, have your company put well, in place? Well, in fact, uh, the last uh, two crises, in 85 and, and some time back in 98, right? That's a yeah. oh. Well, we actually has a reverse uh, situation where, in fact, we are still recruiting. At this moment, we are still looking mm-hmm. for people. Yeah. Okay, and what about for um, Edwin? You mm-hmm. are from a PR firm, right? Yes. So, how are your clients or how uh, you know companies reacting to the policies? Do they think it's even feasible or effective in the long run? Well, I, mean, I think in terms of uh, 
we talk about manpower guidelines yeah. um, and clients. Oh, I can't speak for my clients. I think it's a little bit too soon for me to have mm-hmm. a word with them about um, how, how the guidelines will impact them. Um, honestly, I, I haven't seen any movement or any, any signs or any movement within the, the companies. And most of the companies that we work with are MNCs. Um, we ourselves, we're, we're a SME here, but we're actually an MNC as well, you know, That's as right. a group. Um, I, I can only say that as a group, um, we hire about 300 people in Asia. Um, we survived in 97. We, we were formed in 95. We survived 97, um, mm-hmm. the, the, the currency crisis. Um, it survived SARS, and our HQ was in Hong Kong, so SARS was, was very bad there. Yeah. Um, there was no retrenchment, as far as I know, during this period of time. Um, in fact, most of the senior management of, of our PR agency has been with us for 10 years uh, and above. And I think if you know PR agencies, turnover is, is very yeah. high. Um, with all due respect to, to, to the guidelines you know, that's come out, um, I don't think it, it, it really has much impact on us as, as a group. Um, okay. We've always practiced a certain uh, HR policy. Uh, we've, always has, um, we've always placed staff welfare uh, very high as a priority. Um, at, at this point in time, uh, I would say that our practice has always been we, we keep the good people and whoever is fat in the company, we let them go. And I think whether it's a, re- whether it's a recession, or whether it's an economic downturn, or whether you're in good times, mm-hmm. that's the kind of policy that we follow anyway. Mm-hmm. You know? So we have never retrenched anyone due to the fact that the company is losing money. Mm-hmm. In fact, the way that the company has operated has been always that we can survive a recession for at least two years. You know? And for that two years, we don't need to actually retrench anybody. We don't even need to have, take pay cuts uh, for our staff for these two years because we have enough cash reserves to actually sustain ourselves, even if there was a downturn. Mm-hmm. Uh, because our company is, as a group is big enough. Um, even if individual officers in, in Singapore is a small office, it's easy for us to go into the red, you know. But even during this period of time, uh, we have enough cash to say sustain a bad two-year period, and and there's no need to actually cut any staff uh, at this point in time. And I think it's really important that we don't we don't actually just go into a retrenchment as a knee-jerk reaction of cutting costs. I think there are many ways to to cut costs within a company, you know. And retrenchment, I agree with that at least. Uh, but it's common sense. It's really a last resort. But of course, if the staff is not good for the company, the staff shouldn't be there in the first place. Mm. So if, if a company already operates on a very lean operating budget, you know, there's really no real need to look at uh, retrenchment or cost cutting unless you are slowly, you know, really, really going to the red already. Mm. Um, of course, uh, before I was, I was doing this, I was in SPH. And, and uh, I think that um, there were definitely their reaction to retrenchment and all that. Um, yeah. I think it, it was... It was a good exercise that we had a few times I was here, you know, and I think some of the people who were retrenched were very happy with the retrenchment as well. So I think that also is in line with the fact that if you have to let them go, you know, do it gently, make sure that they don't die immediately after leaving the company as well. I think that's, that's just common sense. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ask in the market, how has it been reacting so far? Um, to the entire crisis, obviously, there is a lot of impact, you know. Uh, we can see it already from our perspective. Marketing budgets have been cut. And, and I think as media owners, you all would be concerned uh, just as much as we would, you know. Um, but I think it's not so bad at this point in time yet. It's not so bad yet that we really need to look at severe cost-cutting measures. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely retrenchments is not on our... List. But not everyone uh, exercises such options as, you know, retrenchment is, retrenchment is you know, the last resort. Uh, we've seen, you know, in the headlines these few days, yeah. DBS. I mean, we yeah. all know this like the back of our hand. We've seen it in and out. We've seen DBS receive a lot of flag from the union, mm. from the public and all that. Okay, you are a PR company. Yeah. This is a PR nightmare sure. for, for the bank itself. Sure. Let's just begin with that because it's, okay. it's enough for a whole show. But yeah, okay, I mean, let's begin we, with that. When you talk about the public relations um, aspect of it, obviously for a listed company and for a private company, it's two different set of rules that you play with. Uh, for a private company, we don't have to say anything to anybody. You know, how, we, how well we do, how badly we do, nobody really knows, you know, unless you would hire somebody to, to dig up um, information on us. Now, being DBS and, and, and if you're talking about a public listed company, you have to be transparent. Um, and obviously one of the issues here is that you have to also be seen to be cutting costs in order to satisfy your shareholders as well. You know? And I think that, um, I'm not saying DBS did it as a, as a PR exercise, you know? but certainly I think that um, uh, your first and foremost, your responsibility is to your shareholders as well. And as to whether or not uh, retrenchment will have a positive impact, uh, well, that's anybody's guess. You know? um, in my mind, I don't think cutting jobs during a time of recession is a good uh, PR uh, exercise, in, in my opinion. You know, I don't think it's a good PR exercise. Uh, but at the same time, there are many other factors that you have to consider as well. You know, um, how's the company performance, to, performance doing? Um, as you know, globally, many banks are going into trouble. I, I think DBS wants to make a statement that you know, we are not going to trouble. 
uh, we, we, are, we are watching our costs very carefully. Um, and I think not just DBS, but if you look through public listed companies as a whole, I think many people have, have talked about even moving out of you know, Swanky Shenton Way to, to suburban offices because you're talking about a, a, a 50% save uh, in rental. You know? So I think that there are many cost considerations uh, which will reflect well on, on corporate governance, you know, on, on the way that the company actually runs itself. Um, but um, you, you probably need very good publicists to be able to spin that uh, properly, I would think. Yeah, yeah, you need spin doctors for things you, like you that. You would, you would. Yeah, Even yeah. the government has, has pretty good spin doctors when, when you know... Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have entire missionary behind our government. Okay, onto the ground, we are talking about, you know, uh, uh, retrenchments, people are, this is an environment of fear, am I going to be next, am I going to be get axed, you know, and all that. So, here you are saying, Danny, that your company is hiring more people. Yes. Yeah, how's that possible? Well, what, <coughs> what are you doing that, 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 you know, yeah, people are, you know, axing people, I may be next, and there you are hiring more well, people. Well, uh, I should say, uh, we are, actually, we have uh, some projects uh, taken and uh, just like Marina Sand, they're looking at recruitment, recruiting people for IR project and all that. Yeah, uh, I think all along we uh, fall short of manpower. So I think this is the only chance. Maybe we can uh, look at uh, recruiting the, the right people from the market and then put them in the right place and train them. Actually, I think that's very interesting because that's exactly what we're doing uh, right now as well. Uh, not just us in Singapore, but as a group. Um, I mean, if the market continues to crash and there's no bottom, it will be trouble for everybody eventually. But as long as it's a bottom, um, what a recession, what, what caused, uh, what's a good thing for uh, companies that have sort of kept their head above water, what's good for them is that during this period, a lot of people, a lot of good talent out there are actually looking for jobs. And this is the best time to actually hire. Mm. In, boom, in boom years, you know, I'm telling you, you can't get talent that you actually want. You know, I think this, these are the times that I have people knocking on my door right now, people who wouldn't even give us a second look, you know, maybe a year ago, you know, where, where salaries have gone about 40%, especially in our field. Today, you know, I have people who, who want jobs and I actually have to turn them away because I can't take that many people in my company right now. I am hiring, but I'm hiring the, the right kind of talent that I couldn't get before, you know. The kind of managers that could add to the value of the company, that could add to the uh, business development aspect of the company. And I think this is really the best time because all of them are, are fearful for their jobs. You know, uh, uh, many people might be retrenched, you know, and I think this is the time where talent uh, will actually come into play. So you're well. saying that it sort of sifts out the, the top, the cream and, 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 you know... It would. I mean, as much as there are people fearful, you know, of letting go of their stable jobs, mm -hmm. uh, but I think sometimes it's not up to them as well. Sometimes if someone at, in this climate and condition steps in with a better offer, sometimes they'll take it with, with both hands, you know. Whereas in the past, I may give you a 10% in pay increase, uh, that's too little for me, I don't want to move, you know, and stuff like that. So. I think now is actually, um, at least for recruitment, it's been quite good for us. You know, we, we've got people from much bigger agencies than ourselves asking to actually join us as well. Mm. Well, we've heard lots of lots of news about doom and gloom and mm. will I be the one next one X. Uh, well, in our living room, we know that we're hearing something else other than that. Yeah, so something positive. That's right, for <laughs> once. So let's, let's just, just stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back soon with more on what Singaporeans are thinking and what these men in our room have to offer.